Hello children, myself Mashvi Das. Today we shall discuss about the internal structure of human eye. As you all know, eye, it is one of the sense organs of our body. Externally, these eyes are grouped inside a socket like structure. Then we have two movable parts in our eye, upper part and the lower part. They are called eyelids. They are protective in function and does not allow any foreign particles to enter in our eye. Then we have eyebrows. These eyebrows, they are not directly a part of the eye, but still they are considered to be a part which is protective in function and it is related to our eyes. Then we have a very thin layer at the top of the eye which is called conjunctiva. This is a transparent layer, single layer, which is present as a covering over the front part of the eye. Then we have tear glands at the upper part of the eye which secretes tears. These tears, it is again keeps the eyes lubricated, it protects the eyes from foreign particles, it washes away any kind of foreign particles when it enters into our eyes. Then we have tear glands at the corner of our eyes which collects these tears. So these are the different parts which we can see externally and all these parts are protected in nature. Now we shall see the internal structure of our eye. Children, this eye, actually it is a circular in structure. Then we will see the internal part of the eye. So we call this whole eye to be an eye ball. And this is the structure of an eye ball. It is divided into three parts. First, the outermost part is called sclera. Second part, the middle part, it is called coral. And the innermost part is called the retina. Towards the inner side of the eye, the outermost part, the sclera, it is white in color, metabolic, fibrous tissue. And in front part of the eye, this sclerotic layer or the sclera, it becomes a transparent layer in front part of the eye. The sclera becomes a transparent layer which is called cornea, which is called cornea. And it covers the whole front part of the eye. It covers the whole front part of the eye which is transparent. Children, sometimes what happens due to some defect, this corneal becomes open. Then this part of the eye can be operated. And uh, if any person donates their cornea, healthy cornea, then it can be transplanted in, in place of the defective cornea. So this is the outermost layer of the eye. The middle layer, which is called the choroid layer, it is richly supplied with blood vessels. So, these layer actually supplies nutrients to the whole eye as it contains blood vessels. So, it gets all its nutrients from the blood present in the blood vessels. This coral layer, it also contains a pigment called melanin. These melanin does not allow the light to reflect in the internal part of the eye. Now this choroid, when it comes in front of the eye, it becomes expanded into some muscular layer which is called ciliary bone. The choroid expands into a muscular layer which is called ciliary bone on both the sides. These ciliary body and contraction and relaxation controls the 
size of the lens. How size of the lens? The lens sometimes it needs to be flattened or it needs to be more round in shape according to the position of the object which the person is seeing. So this is done by the ciliary muscles. It is the part of the layer choroid. Then again, this choroid part of the uh, where it becomes ciliary body. Then it again comes in front of the eye as iris. It extends to the front of the eye as iris. We call this to be iris. And in between, they do not join. In between, they leave a hole which is called pupil. They do not join. They leave a hole which is called pupil. So children, I am again telling the middle layer. The middle layer consists of the blood vessels which apply nutrients to the eye. And it also contains melanin which does not allow the light to reflect inside the eye. And this middle layer in front of the eye, it gets divided into an expanded muscular structure which is called ciliary bone. This ciliary body controls the shape of the lens. This is the lens. The lens sometimes needs to be flattened, more longer, and sometimes rounded, but short. That is done by the ciliary body. And then after the ciliary body, the choroid layer, again it extends to the front of the eye on both the sides. And this is called the iris. And in between the two iris, there is a hole, there is a hole, which is called pupil. These two iris, they, they iris contains muscles, two types of muscles, circular muscles and radial muscles. Radial muscles, it widens the, it widens the gap between the two iris. That is, the pupil becomes wide bigger. The pupil, the gap, that is the pupil, it becomes bigger due to the action of the radial muscles. And due to the actions of the circular muscles which is present in this iris, the gap between the two iris reduces. Why it happens? Why the pupil needs to be widened or needs to be constructed? It happens because this pupil children, it allows the entry of light into the eyes, into the eyes. And when we need more amount of light, that means when we need to see, when we see any object in darker area, we need more amount of light. That the pupil expands. How do they expand? By the action of the radial muscles of the iris. So that maximum amount of light can enter into the light. And when we are present in a bright light, that time we don't need much light. Then that time, the pupil constricts how by the action of the by circular muscles present in the eyes, and then less amount of eyes enter into our eyes. And this iris also, children, it gives a characteristic color to our eye wall. The one which we can see, the one which we can see that that is actually the that black color, brown color. Sometimes we can see. Sometimes in rare cases, blue color also we can see. That is the iris of our eye, the muscles present in the iris of our eye. And children, you know these muscles present in the iris. It is unique to each and every individual of this eye. No two individual of this earth have similar pattern of muscles in the iris, just like our fingerprints. So it is considered to be as the identification mark of an individual. So this is the second layer of the iris. Third layer of the eye, which is called retina. Retina, it contains the sensory sets called broad cells and the cone cells. The innermost layer of the eye, it contains the sensory cells called the broad cells and the cone cells. The broad cells are sensitive in darker region. That is, it does not respond to colored light. 
right hand. And it is divided, the blood cells are divided throughout the retina of the eye properly. And it contains an uh, pigment called rhodopsin, which is active in the darker region. Along with the rod cells, there are other types of sensory cells which are called cone cells. And they respond to bright light or colored light. And we are able to see in the colored region, in the bright area region, due to the presence of cone cells in our retina of the heart. And so now, the distribution of the cone cell is not evenly as it is there in the rod cells. The cone cells, it is most of the cone cells of the eye, it is actually concentrated in one of the area exactly at the back of the eye, horizontally in the middle horizontal line of the eye, at the back of the eye. And this portion here, the concentration of the cone cell is maximum, and we are able to see any object most clearly at this region. And this region is called phobia centuries. The region is called phobia centuries, which contains the maximum amount of cone cells and helps us to see any object most clearly. And apart from this, the reason spot on this innermost layer, it is the retina, it is called blind spot. We have no sensory cells are present, neither rod cells nor cone cells. And here you know what, what happens? The nerve fibers coming out from all the sensory cells present in the retina, they converge and go out from the eye. These nerve fibers are called optic nerves and these nerves go to the brain carry the nerve fibers. These optic nerves go to the brain carrying the nerve impulses. So this is the innermost layer of the eye. Apart from this, what else are present in the eye? There is a oval like structure which is called lens, biconvex. It is biconvex oval like transparent structure which is called lens. And the light rays finally fall on this lens converge or diverge and then the light rays falls on this lens finally they converge and they form the image on the retina. The size of the lens they are controlled by ciliary bone. Along with it there is another muscular layer which is called sensory ligaments which is present just out of the lens. These sensory ligaments holds the lens in its proper position. Holds the lens on its proper position and along with the ciliary body it controls the shape of the lens. Then just this lens along with the suspended structure divides the whole eyeball into two parts and those two parts, the outer part and the inner part, they contain a liquid structure. The outer part outside the lens, this part, this part contains a liquid which is called aqueous humor. Aqueous humor. This part, this aqueous humor, it keeps the eye lubricated absorbs the initial shock if our eye happens to get anything anytime. So this is the function of the aqueous humor. And there is a jelly-like substance present inside the lens in this part, which is called vitreous humor. This vitreous humor maintains the shape of the eye and also it protects the inner retina and the nerve edges. So children, these are the different structures which are present internally in our body. 
this. Now let us see how our eyes functions. When the light rays falls on the cornea, little bit get converged. Then through aqueous humor and through the pupil, it falls on the lens. When the light rays falls on the lens, these lens converge the light rays more and forms the image on this area of cobia centuries on this retina, inner layer of the eye, retina near the cobia centuries. When the image is formed exactly near, uh, on the cobia centuries, we are able to see the image very clearly. And this image, when it is formed on the retina, it is inverted and real. When the image is formed on the retina, they uh, produces light energy, and those light energy produces some bring some chemical changes, and those chemical changes finally produces nerve impulses. Those nerve impulses, through these nerves, all the bone cells and the rod cells, they are connected by nerves, optic nerves. Through these nerves, it joins and merges together and that image is transmitted to the brain, to the optical center of the brain. The brain interprets the image and helps us to see the object. Even if the image is formed inverted, but the brain interprets it in an upright manner. So this is how the image is formed and it is transmitted to the brain and we are able to see the object. Children, this lens, this lens flattens or it becomes shortens or rounded, depending upon the object which we are seeing. If we are seeing any distant object, then the lens remains flattened. And if we are seeing any close nearby object, the lens becomes rounded. And it happens due to the action of suspense variables and the CBD So these all are the different parts which are present internally in our eyes. So children, this is the internal structure of the eye and if we want to see a model of eye, it exactly looks like this. And you can see that, uh, you can see the uh, all the muscles in and around, they are the muscles of the eyelids. A bone, black color bone, that is the pupil. And this is the eyeball. So this is all about human eye. Let us end our session here. Thank you.